Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Shauna from Created and Made, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I took my Dollar Tree coffee filters, my alcohol inks, my stencils, some acrylic paints, and my eight inch round gel plate and created these stunning printed coffee filters. There's a lot happening in this video, fun stuff ahead, stay tuned. Okay, let's get right to it. I'm showing you what I use for this video right now. Those were the Dollar Tree coffee filters, some alcohol inks, and some small rubber bands, some isopropyl, my eight inch gel plate, and various acrylic paint colors. This isn't all of them, Just this is just a small selection. And I also used some brayers for the gel printing. Now the first step in this, and I'm not going to go through this whole process because I did a whole video on tie dyeing using your inks. I didn't do alcohol ink tie dyeing, but it's the same kind of process. Now, the first step I'm going to show you guys uh, is how I tie dyed, quote unquote, the coffee filters. I spray them down first with some isopropyl. And then you just fold them into whatever shapes you want to see. The more symmetrical the folds, the more symmetrical the print is going to be when it's done. So this one, I just fold it into little triangles and then I'm going to secure it with a tiny rubber band. The rubber bands aren't f necessary for all the folds, but this one was, I thought, would come apart. So I adhered it or secured it with a uh, a small rubber band and those rubber bands i got from kroger they sell them at the like walmart and the hair stores and stuff like that um this one i did a different kind of fold but i'm also going to go ahead and secure this with the rubber bands now these are wet coffee filters so you gotta kind of be gentle with them but <clears throat> once they're all secured then you can go in with your inks now I used alcohol inks on these obviously, but if you're doing it with like distress uh, or dilutions inks, you would just spray them with water instead. And again, I will link to the video that we did tie dyeing our tissue papers. It's really cool. You guys should try it. But okay, I just, I'm going in here on the video with two colors of alcohol ink. I will list the colors in the description if you're interested in what particular colors I've used. I'm pretty sure this one is um, Poppy Field and maybe Sunshine, something like that. I'll list it down below. But the next one, I'm just going to go in and use two new colors. And I'm just, there's no real rhyme or reason here. Wherever I see a white piece, I'm just going in and trying to cover it with some ink. I'm not going to color cover all the white because you do want to leave some white um, on it so that the print has some, you know, variety in it. But wherever I'm seeing white on the top and the bottom, I will usually cover with ink and the, the white that's on the inside likely doesn't get covered. So that's the way you, you can keep your white space in there. So I did about six or seven of these and I did the rest off camera. I want to bore you. Oh no. I did one more right here, the purple one. This was the last one that I did. And <clears throat> it's the same process for all of them. So I didn't want to show the whole thing. The only thing that differs in the process is how I folded the papers. And you can fold them any way you want. But how you fold it will determine what kind of print you get when it's unfolded. Now, these stay wet for quite some time, but they're very easy to dry, as I'll show you guys a little bit later. Now, I'm jumping forward to a step because I put those alcohol ink um, coffee filters off to the side to let them dry a bit. And I'm jumping forward to this step where I am just printing some background papers with some texture in them because I'm going to use these to pull some ink. Um, when, I, when I get my stencils out, I'm going to pull paint off using these background pages now i added this in and i want to let you guys see this because it's just a really cool step that you can do not not just when you're alcohol ink inking or when you're using coffee filters or whatever but just when you're printing solid colored background sheets it's fun to add texture to them so that they're not just you know boring sheets of color now you can 
spread these out and add whatever textures you want but what I just used just then was a placemat and this is another placemat with some embossing on it and I actually did a whole video <laughs> on using placemats in your arts and crafts recently so um that'll be a fun one to check out i'll link it probably at the end as well now <clears throat> this was that embossed placemat here and i'm just putting this these off to the side because i'm going to use them later when i get out my stencils um with the alcohol ink prints and i'm just going through with some blick acrylic ink in some vibrant solid colors um i think i pulled out a rainbow of colors that i wanted to use now this little trick here this is a dollar tree massager maybe i will link to a video up top where i went through a bunch of textures from the Dollar Tree that you can use on the on the gel plate and this just makes some cool sort of painterly looking lines on the plate now I probably use too much paint here so I'm gonna get this print which is the more solid colored one and then I am gonna probably gonna pull this I don't know if I kept it in the video but I'm gonna pull this ghost print as well which there's still a pretty good amount of ink on the plate so I'll, I'll just get that off too and I'm just using some titanium white to pull this one off and off to the side you'll see me brayering into a composition journal I use those journals after I'm done braying off brayering off and then I use those journals as art journals so no paint goes to waste here so you saw that ghost print that I just pulled. There's still a good amount of ink on that. So that one looked good. And I'm just going in now with some magenta. I think Blick calls this color magenta. And my the next texture I'm going to use is this piece of... Oh, I know what this is. This is just trash. It came from, I think, a super mario monopoly game that i got for my kids at some point and those were the little coins that we popped out and that was the piece that was left but you know you can gel print with trash it's fine look at that it creates a cute little pattern um and text visual texture on that print one of my favorite things to do is finding things that would go to trash in the trash normally and finding a way to make them look great on the gel plate now this also is another placemat i'm telling you i love my placemats um they are a great source of textural interest when you are printing see how much that looks like a fabric sort of on the on the print i really love that um that result and of course more trash <laughs> packaging oh who doesn't love bubble wrap packaging i love the way that these particular bubbles um print it as well see that looks pretty cool now, i think this is one of the final ones that i did And I went in with, oh, another one of my favorite methods, paper towels. I mean, the paper towels usually have some embossed sort of raised pattern on them. And that is like super easy to transfer on the gel plate. So what you'll pull off is something that looks like a paper towel. It has that same texture, that same pattern, but we got that onto our coffee filter with this eight inch gel plate now this is a jelly not jelly arts it's gel press eight inch round plate and it's perfect it is it is the perfect size for these dollar tree coffee filters now now i'm jumping back to the alcohol ink printed filters and i'm skipping around quite a bit because i did come in with my um dryer and I dried it off now these were still 
pretty wet all of them when I unfolded them but the the alcohol ink dries extremely fast and so once you open it up the ink is not still going to be moving but you got to get the the alcohol to evaporate and using my heat tool it it happens really really fast I just didn't want to force you guys to watch that drying process so I cut a lot of that out but you're seeing this is the first one we did together this sort of red and yellow one that combined to form some orange colors and I really liked this one I didn't like it so much by the end <laughs> after I'd done this stenciling over the top but you know that's what happens when you when you play around like this some of my um alcohol ink the like this one this one here I'm about to show you guys right now this one was my least favorite alcohol ink pattern because it just looked like I didn't really do much like I just dripped ink on there and I think that is <laughs> what I actually did and it just it didn't come out very attractive but by the end by the time I was done stenciling over it it was one of my favorites so that's the push and the pull like sometimes you'll love it to start and you'll hate it by the time you're finished or vice versa this was another one that like the more <sighs> the way that I folded it determined this pattern that was on it and it was just not very geometric and I didn't love it but you know it's all good I'm just going to show you guys the rest this was the one we did together at the end too with the the amethyst in the ranger alcohol ink and I think cool Perry was the second color that I used and this one came out pretty beautiful too I like the I like the way that this one ended up looking it was pretty fragile this one and you got to be careful because it is just wet uh coffee filters but i like that this was a pretty subtle but still a very pretty print that turned out now i think i'm going to go through and flip through all of them just you know to give an overview of the alcohol ink printed filters before i jump into stenciling them so if you don't catch what quite what if I'm going a little too fast you'll catch them all at the end Here we go with the review. Now what I'm going to jump into now is I'm going to get out some stencils and I'm going to use the, the acrylic printed ones with the pattern to pull out ink from the stencil and I'm going to use the alcohol ink ones to pull out um, what what is left on the plate after I, I pull the ink out with the first one it, that sounds a, a little complicated but you'll see what, <laughs> you'll see what, what is happening as I move along here now what I wanted to mention is the kind of stencil that I use it, they're all fairly geometric like you'll see this one from Karen Tamir um, that you can get joggles.com which I will link below um, it's very geometric but most of them have pretty substantial um spacing in in them as well because that is just the look i was going for for this particular printing session is so i wanted something geometric and bold that would go over the top of these pretty busily printed alcohol ink tie dyed what have you um prints that i had so what you saw me do there was i pulled out the ink first using the acrylic print and now i'm just printing on top of the alcohol ink tie-dyed print and i'm just choosing a a color that i think would go well with the ink colors in the alcohol ink printed version now this one <clears throat> is one of those ones that I, for me didn't really turn out because this yellow was just a little bit too light and too translucent over the top of that alcohol ink. I didn't love it, but I do love what happened with the uh, the acrylic printed coffee filter. And I'll show you guys in just one second what this one's going to look like. This was the I don't know, placemat printed blue 
filter and using that yellow over the top I think just turned out really bold and really beautiful I like how that turned out now I have a lot of paint left on the plate and I'm going to pull some of that out and then I'm going to print over the top of my alcohol ink filter all of these just extra prints that I'm getting when there's too much plate and too much paint left on the plate all of those are will make great collage fodder because these are coffee filters so they're pretty absorbent they're they're pretty thin and they're easy to rip you see that one I didn't love it it's a it's a little messy looking but you know whatever it could be fodder too because they're, it's, it's easy to rip it's easy to glue it's easy to use these filters um when you're trying to do collage now I got uh for this one out my dioxazine purple this is I love this color it's super rich super deep and it, I think it coordinated really well with that um I think it's called amethyst alcohol ink in the ranger line that was feeling a little dry so i added some more paint to the plate to make sure i can get these two prints that i'm trying to get out of it the first one as you can see is my yellow patterned acrylic coffee filter that i printed and i'm just pulling out the ink from the stencil you see that pattern that uh, i really like this stencil i think this is a I'll link it below. I think this is a um, the Crafters Workshop stencil. Look at that. I love the way the what's remaining looks. And I, I, I love the way that it prints over the top of this alcohol ink tie-dye print. Which you'll be able to see in just a second. You see that effect? It kind of looks like stained glass. And these are translucent. And so when I held them up to the light, they have a really cool look to them. I love how that one came out. Now, this is the one that I liked when I was done alcohol inking it. But I didn't like so much when I was done with the stencil. Now, I think part of it is that this stencil wasn't... I don't know it has a little a few too many lines a few too it's a little too busy to print on top of um an alcohol inked tie-dyed surface that also is very busy in its own right so that's probably why I didn't didn't particularly love that one but this stencil but I think is Julie Faith and Balls are um I really do like actually just not in this particular iteration Now these, what uh, the question may come of what I plan to do with these coffee filters. And you know what? The jury's still out on that one. I think, I'm pretty sure though that I'm gonna make, end up making a round journal. And I'm gonna use these prints to um, adhere to the background of that journal. But yeah, I'm still gonna, uh, I have some thinking to do on it to conceptualize it, but Whatever I do, I'll make sure to let you guys know. I'll probably do another video, maybe a tutorial on how I put together my journal. But this was another one that I really liked. And it sort of reminded me of, I don't know, like a mermaid or something. Like these little fishy um, gill looking stencil. Um, the stencil kind of looks like, I don't know, fish scales. And the way that... I it prints on top of this alcohol ink um, print, I think just ends up looking really, has a really cool effect. This one also looked very stained glass-ish when it was held up to the light. I like how that one came out for sure. Now this one was the one I said before that I really didn't like the alcohol ink print, but by the time I was done with it, it was one of my favorites. Now even this is a, a, a bold sort of choice for a color because not everybody loves brown. And I'm sorry if you can hear it, there's a train 
<laughs> we have a train outside of our house. I'm sorry if you can hear that. It's really loud. But this stencil too is another Karen Tamir. And it can go wrong in the right, in, 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 it can be a little busy for this particular application, but I think because the alcohol ink version was sort of sporadic and there wasn't a lot of ink on the print, that it ended up working really well and, it, and ended up coming out really pretty. I like this stencil a lot. It works really well in this application. See, look at that. I think that, that that ended up really beautiful. That brown works really well with that um that blue color in the alcohol ink. This was another one that I didn't love. I think after playing with this method, what I realized is that the light the light colors, like the yellow that I used before and this pink color, it wasn't the best paint choice I just think the light colors didn't really work as well over the top of the alcohol inks but this this one I think came out good over the top of that purple printed bubble wrap sheet that looks pretty cool but I just think that a darker the darker colors worked better but you know it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't my favorite. And that was a really nice print. I did like that original alcohol ink print. But I didn't like what um what it looked like after they're putting that pink over the top. But you be the judge. What do you think about this color? I think maybe had it been more solid. Like it has a lot of texture to it. Had it been just like a solid pink fencing looking design over the top it would have looked better but you win some you lose some <laughs> now I I'm going through now and I'm just showing you the final version of each of the prints some of these you guys did not see on camera because I didn't do all of them on camera I didn't want this video to get just super duper long but I think I, I really loved this technique I really liked how I was able to use a lot of my supplies but come up with some very usable very beautiful prints that can be used for collage or just as journal pages themselves so I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you got something out of it I hope it got your creative juices flowing and and if so, please go ahead and leave a like and consider subscribing. But in any case, I hope to see you guys next time. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.